Welcome to the quieter side, I won't say quiet yeah. side, of Whitman Regional Airport. We're here for EAA or Venture Oshkosh 2009, and we're talking with Major Paul Brown of the A-10 West, not West Coast anymore, demo team. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Happy to be here. It's a wonderful day to be at an air show. All right, we want to ask you a little bit about your job flying the A-10, but first tell us about the airplane. What is it that's special about this airplane, and why do you enjoy flying it? The airplane special is because it was built around the gun. You know, it was built sole purpose airplane for close air support, and it does close air support better than any airplane in the world, and that's why it's awesome. Now, I think that maybe the first time a lot of people who are uh, around and interested in aircraft now got to see the A-10 in action was probably the Desert Storm years. If I understand it correctly, the A-10 was kind of in mothballs or had plans to be at that point. Well, there's a number of times where the Air Force has looked at it for force restructuring, some cost-cutting measures, and they've talked about getting rid of the airplane, and every time we do, uh, we seem to end up in a scrap where we need it, and it proves its value over and over, and now we're going to be around till 2028, so it'll be one of the oldest fighters ever. Why is that? Why can't they make, why have they not advanced something beyond what the A-10 can do in its particular mission? What's beautiful about the A-10 is simplicity, okay, and you can have all the bells and whistles and GPS guided bombs and all of that, but when everything goes bad and the guys are yelling on the ground, the still most invaluable thing is a flexible weapon like the gun and a good set of eyeballs to look on the ground and say, those are good guys, these are bad guys, and to be able to go in there and do that precisely. We use this gun like a surgeon would use a scalpel, it's that precise. Now, using that gun is an amazing thing to watch. I mean, obviously, we don't fire any live rounds at, at air shows, but uh, what are the particular attributes of that particular weapon that nothing else does well? Well, we got 1,179 rounds, okay? So and we shoot about 100 rounds per burst. So per airplane, we've got 11 bursts out there, and each one of those we would target for a tank. So, for instance, if I hit all my targets, I'd be able to take out 11 tanks with just my gun alone. And we don't ever fly alone, so we're either in two or four ships. So you get a four-ship A-10 out there, and it's 44 armored vehicles you can take out with one four-ship. And it's, it's just incredible. It's reliable, it works all the time, and it's easy. I can teach a six-year-old to do it. All right, now the A-10 is kind of an oddity at an air show, and I think maybe one reason it draws attention other than its unique look is the fact that it is very maneuverable, but it's also quiet. Uh, is that a tactical advantage? It is a tactical advantage, and these engines, they're turbofans, high-bypass turbofans, just like you'd see in, a, in an airliner. Uh, they are incredibly fuel efficient. They don't have as much thrust as some of the modern jets do, but they are quiet, and that is a tactical advantage. Above 20,000 feet, guys can't hear us on the ground, so we're able to loiter and provide a lot of protection for special forces teams without uh, you know, giving up the element of surprise. If you own a Cirrus today or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. Now, I have heard that this is a very survivable plane in battle conditions. What makes it that way? Armor. It's one of every four pounds on the airplane is armor. So this airplane right here weighs about 40,000 pounds. So 10,000 pounds of its armor. And you think the whole mission of an airplane is to keep it as light as you can so you can haul load. And there's, there's no other design out there that carries that much armor. I mean, it protects me, my whole ejection seat. I mean, it's an unbelievably survivable airplane. And they, they built it to be as survivable as possible and as lethal as possible. And Republic did a great job. All right, now, how does it carry that much weight around and still look as maneuverable as it is? Well, it's got a big, fat, straight wing. And, you know, we're limited, just like World War II airplanes were. You know, it couldn't go supersonic because they had flat bottom wings. They didn't have laminar flow wings till the Mustang came around. And this is a flat bottom wing. So we're limited to 0.75 Mach because parts of the airplane start to go supersonic and it's a very subsonic airplane with straight wings. But that straight wing is what makes it maneuverable. And the people love us, it shows, because we never leave their, their field of view. We stay within their 10 to 2 o'clock the whole entire time, and, uh, and people like it because it's like watching one of the aerobatic air airplanes out here. It's a jet-powered Stearman, that's what I tell people. It's not Jimmy Franklin, it's not quite as cool, but uh, it's a jet-powered Stearman with a big gun. You've obviously probably flown other planes. Is there any, any particular quirk this airplane has that takes some getting used to? The only one that I found weird was that it has Buffett post stall. So you have no 
uh, physical indications that are built in with the wing with twist or anything to tell you when the wing's going to stall. So to counteract that, we have an oral tone that goes in our ear. And uh, McDonnell Douglas did this for years with units of AOA, but it's based on angle of attack. And you get a single beep when you're not quite at the stall, and then you get a double rate beep the whole time you're flying when you're right on the edge. And so it talks to you. And then if you continue to pull past that double rate, then you're getting into the buffeting and you're, you're already in the stall at that point. So uh, is that, does it make it tougher to learn? Uh, what do you fly to train in before you get assigned to the A-10 group? That is the beauty of the airplane. The only people that have ever flown the A-10 are hog drivers and a few test pilot guys that we let through the course because we have to. Uh, but no, there's no trainer for this. You know, we've got simulators and guys go through there and they, they're in class for about two weeks and they do five simulators. We take them out and we start the jet. And then I'm an instructor that teaches students and we, we chase them out there. So I taxi out there and get the kid on the runway and get clearance for takeoff and have them run it up. and. You can see you can see him shaking there in the cockpit and tell him release brakes when he's ready. So it's all on their own. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. All right, Major, you've brought up hog drivers. Tell us about the official name and the less official name of this aircraft and where they come from. The original name was the Thunderbolt II, and that herald harks back rather to World War II when the P-47 was around, the Thunderbolt, and it was a fantastic air-to-ground airplane and air-to-air, -air, but it was known for its air-to-ground ruggedness. It would come back with holes all over it. The P-47 was an air-cooled engine, uh, where the Mustang was obviously liquid-cooled, and one bullet in the wrong place would bring down a Mustang and a radiator or a coolant line. Well, that's the same thing with this. You know, we kid that the F-16 is a modern-day Mustang where it's sleek and fast and light and really goes, but one bullet in the wrong place can bring that airplane down, where we're the modern-day P-47. We can come back with holes all over the place, and it just keeps on trucking. So Thunderbolt and Thunderbolt II, and that's how the uh, name originated. What about the Warthog? It's so ugly. You know, it's a god-awful ugly airplane. It really is, uh, unless you fly it, and then it's the most beautiful thing in the world, aside from the guys that have had their lives saved from, you know, on the ground, and they think it is the, the prettiest woman ever. It's just a, a wonderful airplane. They say it's, it's looks only a mother could love, and, um, and we love it. It's just a fantastic airplane. Well, tell us about flying it, getting to fly it, and about your career in the Air Force. How did you decide to do this, and what would you say to people who are thinking about the same thing? Oh, wow. That's a long road. I decided I wanted to be a fighter pilot when I was eight, and I come from a whole family of pilots. My mom's a United Airlines pilot. My dad's a mechanic. He taught her to fly. Both my grandparents are pilots. We lived on an airport community, so I wanted to go to the Air Force Academy, and I worked hard and struggled through that and went on to pilot training. So there was 34 in my class, and two of us got fighters. There was an F-16 and an A-10. I had about 1,000 hours of flight time when I got there, and, uh, and I did well. I would leap ahead every phase, but then my buddies with no flight time would just be nipping in my heels, you know, mm -hmm. seven, eight rides in the program, and I got beat out. Uh, I got beat out by one of my best friends, and I graduated number two, and he got the F-16, and I ended up with a hog, and neither one of us would trade it for anything, you know. A lot of people say your favorite fighter is the one you're in, and it's just it's just wonderful. And I, I can go on and on about flying in Afghanistan, but it's a, it's just a wonderful airplane. Well, I want to thank you personally for bringing these planes. I say these planes because you bring a spare with you, but it's going to be fun watching you fly, and thanks for sharing your, your, your love for this plane with us. All right. Well, I'm happy to be here. Thank you guys for doing the interview on behalf of uh, the A-10 West demonstration team and the Heritage Flight. Thank you for coming out to Oshkosh.